is what we're having at this time. And uh, you know how it goes. It's our weekly agricultural program. This week, we're going to be talking about a major project being undertaken in the fisheries sector. It's called Promoting Community-Based Climate Resilience in the Fisheries Sector, PCCR. And it's about strengthening climate-smart fisheries and aquaculture policies and the regulatory framework and a whole bunch of other goals. What does all that mean? Well, Avery Smichael is the Principal Director of Aquaculture in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. So we've got her to translate what all those terms mean and uh, to give us the insight on a new hatchery that's going to be constructed. So good morning, Avery Smichael. How are you doing? Hi, morning, Paula. I'm, I'm very well, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Michael, for agreeing to chat with us this morning about all of these developments. And we want to start with an overview of, what is it, PCCR? Yes, that's the Promoting Community-Based Climate Resilience in the Fisheries Sector Project. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a project which um, is funded through the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience. Um, This is a fund under the Strategic Climate Fund. And of course, the Ministry of Agriculture, the National Fisheries Authority, is very grateful to our partners in the Planning Institute of Jamaica and also the persons at the PPCR who have worked very hard to ensure that the fisheries sector has been able to benefit from this type of funding. The promoting community-based climate resilience and the fisheries sector project is a 4.875 million US dollar grant funded project which is administered through the World Bank. Um, basically, the project development objective is to increase the adoption of climate resilience practices in targeted fishing and fish farming communities. Okay, and and what does that mean literally that the money will be spent on what workshops giving them equipment what what okay so as you have rightly pointed out there are about four components to the project component one looks at strengthening the fisheries policy and regulatory framework component two looks at diversification and fishery state alternatives like the hood component three looks at capacity building and awareness raising And component four, of course, is project management. So in a nutshell, what this project really is seeking to do is to strengthen climate resilience in fisheries through looking at how our policy and regulatory framework can accommodate climate resilience, but also strengthen how communities are able to interact in that process. Um, So what we have done so far is look at um, what we call monitoring, control, and surveillance in fisheries, um, looking at a system to ensure that that can be strengthened. Because as we know, poaching sometimes, well, poaching does have an impact on, on fisheries and its productivity. So we're looking at strengthening that aspect as well as bringing communities. Help, help me out. What does that mean? Does that mean you are hiring people to look for those who are poaching? What does that mean in, in real life on the ground? What okay. people will be doing what? At present in real life on the ground, what it means is that we have a policy document which um, will impact particularly our sanctuary partners. Um, one aspect of that is through the component three, the livelihood no, component two, the livelihood diversification aspect. Um, we will be funding a sub-project in St. Elizabeth looking at um, activities in a particular sanctuary and seeking to strengthen those to ensure... Act- activities like what? Um, we are looking at a community-based project mm-hmm. which involves strengthening their capacity to monitor and um, monitor and implement strategies that facilitate better sanctuary management. There's a hatchery that's going to be constructed. Can you tell us about that? Right. So the hatchery falls under component two, and it is one of the flagship projects of the 
promoting community based climate resilience in the fisheries sector project. So basically, what this statute will ensure is that the National Fisheries Authority, which is one of the primary producers of tilapia seed stock to fish farmers, will have increased and improved capacity to meet the needs of the stakeholders. So what we'll be receiving is a roughly 13,000 square foot um, recirculating aquaculture system hatchery facility, which is intended to be biosecure. One of the advantages of a recirculating aquaculture system is that it is also climate resilient. So it will basically meet a major objective of the project in terms of ensuring that um, we are able to ensure sustainability of feedstock production um, throughout the year. And that definitely is going to boost growth in the fisheries sector and the economy at large. That's fantastic. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. We appreciate it and we look forward to seeing the successes of the project. Yes, we also look forward to impacting in a very positive way the operations of fish farmers through this project. Right. Folks, we have been speaking with our Principal Director for Aquaculture in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Mrs. Avery Smichael. Did you know that fishery imports are the third most important food item bought abroad by Jamaicans? Accounted for 12% of total food imports in 2010. And for more information on what's happening in the agriculture and fisheries sectors, visit the Ministry's website at moa.gov.jm. You can follow them on Facebook at Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. And you can check them out on Instagram and Twitter, M-O-A-F-J-M. That's it for this week's Acrobuzz.